Hi, my name is Nandini Trivedi, and I'm a professor in the physics department at The Ohio State University. The Festival of Physics was a unique collaboration between the physics department and the Columbus Science Museum, COSI. We had a two-day event in October 2007 where we engaged with the public, telling them about interesting ideas of how new properties emerge when we bring together many atoms. For example, superconductivity. At high temperatures, these electrons are moving around chaotically, producing resistance. As the temperature drops, two electrons with opposite spin pair up, and then all the pairs come together in a beautiful dance, acting coherently. This idea was in fact put together in a dance with Rachel uh, Bogia, who choreographed the dance with a troupe of eight students. And then the public, in fact, got to participate in this dance. So we got to become these superconducting electrons. The other interesting thing was uh, were uh, four lectures given by Chris Hamill, Tom Lemberger, Mohit Randeria, and I on the basic aspects of superconductivity and superfluidity and magnetism for the general public. Uh, another major highlight were uh, uh, 11 stations of Festival a la carte, in which about 60 students participated, 40 undergraduates and 20 graduate students. And these students really explained some simple aspects of electricity and magnetism. We also involved about 60 students, 40 undergraduates and 20 graduates, who volunteered at 11 stations, physics a la carte, showing beautiful demos to the public on basics of electricity and magnetism popping rings, freezing bananas, and of the most exciting of all, a levitated train. And now I invite you all to see this video and see for yourself how exciting this Festival of Physics was. I would, of course, like to thank ICAM, OSU, and COSI for helping us put together what we hope will be one of many such festivals. Thank you.
what happens is what happens is when you cool off these chips they want to expel or basically they want to cancel the field from this magnetic table so none of the magnetic field goes through the superconductor and you oppose with the same field the chips are magnets? I'm sorry? the chips are magnets? these are magnets the chips are superconductors see it? Can see, it? How is it see? it's not out? in contact. The superconductor and the magnet are not touching each other, e even though he's still holding it in the air. And you see how it floats? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, what is happening here is the electricity from the power supply is heating up the coils right here, and it's causing the paper to burn. It has friction and air resistance. So if I can do something like that, it will now have only air resistance. But would it be better to have it at room temperature? Uh, if you can make the superconductive... If we can have it at room temperature, we don't need the liquid nitrogen for that anymore. I'll show you some real experimental data and this is where science starts differing from just magic because we do real experiments and look at hard data and try to understand that. Okay, and we like to make these kinds of plots. We like to not just go, wow, oh, wow, this is great, but then we like to quantify things and make a graph. That's what typically scientists do. They make graphs. Who would like to read a graph? Does this graph speak to you? Does it somehow... Do you look at it and say, ah, this is amazing. Does it speak to you? Go down, and then? You have how much conductivity or resistance yes. is on the x-axis. On y-axis, that's or y. y -axis. Okay, yeah. And then? Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure the dots are experiments. Yes. So each one of the dots would be an experiment to see at what temperature, how much resistance each item would have yes and you did a, each different test and it has a line the, the line the graph has a line to show how the different yes. experiments went okay very good he, he got us off the ground now the resist so what you see uh, very well is that the, there are these dots as the temperature is going down da 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 the resistance is coming down and then and then what do you see starts decreasing rapidly yes he says starts decreasing rapidly beautiful let's give him a hand I would say it it does something it plummets down it's not just a gradual decrease it plummets down you know very fast at that one temperature and then the resistance becomes zero so that is what what I've been trying to focus on is the superconductor with zero resistance when you go below a certain temperature. Okay, so that is the point, what we call TC. It's a transition temperature where the resistance has gone from being finite to actual zero. And the state, the, the metal has gone from being a resistive metal to a superconductor everywhere below TC. So that's the superconductor. Do I have a pointer? No, okay, never mind. So that's the superconductor below TC. Okay, so now you all get what a superconductor is. It's a conductor with zero resistance. It's a perfect conductor. So as I said, pre the previous phenomena was well understood by the, the three gentlemen, BCS. Now here is a new class of materials. We all looked at this. This is a very strange material. It's, it's a ceramic. So you say, goodness gracious, how is that happening? If you want a superconductor, at least you need a conductor then there is a hope it may become a superconductor. This stuff here is actually close to being a ceramic. And then you have to do some chemical doctoring to it to make it go superconducting at this very high temperature of about 100 degrees Kelvin. So obviously, we don't have a theory to understand that. And that's where a lot of us, including my research, has to do with trying to understand why something like the ceramic material starts showing superconductivity at these high temperatures. And then the, 
very basic question is, why do these become superconducting? Because in a way, if you understood the why of it, you could then go in, as I said, and do more magic, so to say. And if you understood why, then you could say, OK, this is what you need to change to drive the TC it's even The same higher. electrons in the material producing this resistance come some temperature TC. What happens to these electrons? They are the same little objects moving around. What really happens to them that puts the resistance and pushes it exactly to zero? Exactly to zero. What did these electrons ha need to do to somehow flow now with zero resistance? OK, think about it. It's all happening in this little black pellet. The same electrons are doing something, but they produce no resistance now. They don't seem to bump against each other. The same amount of disorder is there in the material, but it doesn't seem to now distract the electrons. What could be going on? And of course, it would be great if we could explore this question together, but given the limited time, the answer lies in collective behavior. So the electrons are entering a very special state. It's almost like magic. All the electrons are not moving around, jostling at all, but they kind of organize themselves. They coordinate with each other and move in a very special way to produce the zero resistance state. So I want to just conclude now by saying that, uh, asking this question, have all the questions about this phenomena, this material, this kind of science been answered? The answer is a big, a very big, big no. OK? And so this is where you all come in. If you like asking such questions and figuring things out, this is a great place to start and become a scientist. OK, I hope uh, uh, you've all had, had fun seeing all these different demos. Let me just recap quickly what we have learned today. Basically, I've touched on conductors and superconductors. Conductors basically conduct because current, uh, because they allow current to flow, which is the flow of electrons. That produces resistance, and re resistance produces heat. Superconductors, on the other hand, have zero resistance. Current can flow effortlessly. They are, because of this persistent current, they make excellent magnets. And this effortless flow of current happens because all the electrons act coherently. And recent breakthroughs uh, have happened in, and brought forward new materials with high temperature superconductivity. We expect several more such breakthroughs. This is still a topic of active research, and I hope many of you can participate in this or similar activities.